Sometimes if you're lucky, you get the chance to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. I had that chance 50 years ago when I was fortunate enough to carry three special astronauts to the moon and back as part of Apollo 16. My name is Casper, and this is my story. John Young was to be our commander. He was a veteran astronaut of three previous space missions. There was Charlie Duke, our lunar module pilot, who was embarking on his first mission to space. And finally, there was Ken Mattingly, my pilot and the astronaut I'd spend the most time with on our adventure. This too would be Ken's first space mission. Apollo 16 was one of three Apollo J missions, which were intended to be deeper scientific studies of the moon. The plan was for John and Charlie to travel down to the highlands on the lunar surface between two mountains north of the crater Descartes. This area was believed to have been formed by extinct lunar volcanoes, making it an ideal location for research. As the mission drew near, time came for the crew to give me a name. They named the lunar excursion module Orion after the brightest constellation in the night sky. For me, they decided upon Casper after the friendly ghost from the then popular comic books and cartoon series. It had been said that the puffy white suits worn by astronauts looked shapeless and almost ghost-like when seen on television screens, which prompted the choice of my name. As launch day neared, I was integrated on top of a mighty Saturn V rocket and wheeled out to pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. On the morning of April 16, 1972, the crew suited up and climbed inside. Together, we were ready to blast off. The powerful F-1 engines ignited at the bottom of the rocket, and we were on our way. I still remember the exhilarating sensation of leaving Earth's atmosphere and entering orbit. As I parted ways with the Saturn V, Ken proceeded to dock me with Orion, and we flew toward the moon. It took us three days to travel over 230,000 miles to the moon, but we finally arrived in lunar orbit on April 19th. Then on April 20th, it was time for John and Charlie to get inside Orion and separate from me and Ken. Once they were on the moon, work began. Over the course of their three EVAs on the lunar surface, John and Charlie set up numerous science experiments and used the lunar roving vehicle to explore nearby sites, collecting lunar rock samples for study back on Earth. One such rock was Big Muley, the largest sample ever returned from the moon. John and Charlie even found time to perform the ultimate test of the lunar roving vehicle, pushing it to its limits to see how fast it could actually travel with the Lunar Grand Prix. Through John and Charlie's experiments and the samples they would return to Earth, NASA was able to eventually determine that the area was not volcanic in nature as hypothesized. As John and Charlie were exploring the lunar surface, me and Ken remained up in lunar orbit, ready to carry out our mission objectives from there. Ken performed many photographic observations and science experiments using a suite of scientific instruments in my Sims Bay. Together, me and Ken were able to verify the data taken by Apollo 15's command module and provide new information on lunar terrain not previously covered. On April 23rd, John and Charlie blasted off from the lunar surface and reunited with me and Ken in orbit. We jettisoned Orion and set a course back toward Earth. While en route, Ken performed an EVA of his own, retrieving film canisters from my Sims Bay. Then by April 27th, we had made it back to Earth orbit and began atmospheric re-entry. While the heat was intense, my heat shields managed to protect the crew inside as we successfully passed through the atmosphere. When my parachutes deployed, I knew I had done my job. Together, we drifted safely toward the waters below. With my job complete, it was time to think about retirement. In November of 1973, NASA transferred me to the Smithsonian, who delivered me to the Alabama Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. The Alabama Space and Rocket Center, now known as the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, has remained my home for nearly 50 years. Over the years, I have had the privilege to share my unique story with guests at the center. I've even had old friends like Charlie stop by to see me from time to time. While my adventure to space may be history, I have a new and equally significant purpose, for it is the adventures I inspire in those who visit me that will carry my legacy into the future.